morning everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name is Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and this morning I'm going to be doing another painting demonstration. So today I'm going to have a go at doing um, some sort of Chinese inspired painting, what am I doing, um, that involves using the patchwork cutters and using uh, a very small paintbrush, talking of which yeah, I, did, I did manage to get it out of the um, box. <laughs> Sometimes I go live and I've forgotten everything. Um, so like, um, I was trying to think of a good example the other day it was Kelly that set me off on this like a Chinese type pattern so like a bit of a willow type pattern maybe um, but we're going to use our floral patchwork cutters that I've been using over the last few weeks so I'm going to kind of emboss something onto some sugar paste and then I'm going to paint it now um, there is a really good trick with this that I um, worked out yesterday how to do this so it's really worth staying tuned on this because it's got a brilliant technique involved with it so have a little look and see how we get on and then you'll be able to um, to see what I've done now I'm hoping because I'm doing this on white it might be a little bit tricky to see but as I start to paint it it will become more obvious and what I'll do is I'll hold my board up under the camera so you can see it as I go along so hopefully um, you'll see everything good morning everyone I can see a few of you logging in now I've even been so organized as to get myself a cup of tea now I never do this normally I'm running in here at the last minute the only thing I have got today is the um, studio lights are facing me which is a bit much <laughs> I feel like, you know, I've just woken up in the morning. I need a coffee. <laughs> it's kind of a bit like that. But anyway, I'm here. I'm, j I'm here and I'm in one piece. So that's all that matters. Let's take this down before I forget. So we're going to do um, a little bit of painting. We're only going to use one colour today. And the colour we're going to be using is Cerulean Blue, which is an edible art colour and white so two colors actually um i don't really count white as a color because we mix it with everything um there is um an equivalent so if you don't have that color or you want to do something else then you can do i'm looking over across at my dusting colors navy blue or there's another color called ocean blue that's really nice as well so we're kind of going along this kind of theme this morning of this kind of blue and white type painting so it's a lot of outlining with a very small brush <laughs> she says why am I doing this live I'm going to blame Kelly if this goes wrong um but she's not here to be blamed so I'll have to blame her when I get back anyway let's get started so what I'm going to do I've got a small cake board here this morning this is a six inch round drum it's not very big and I'm going to cover it with sugar paste and I didn't do this beforehand because I want to show you this technique that I've come up with um so that you can see how I've managed to emboss and flatten it at the same time I know that sounds a bit weird but let's do it because um, once you see it and understand it it will get you out of making this what can only be described as a horror story if you do it the other way <laughs> because that's what happened when I did it the first time and I thought what is wrong with this and I've still got my example of how I painted it yesterday um, but I've worked out a good technique to get around this so all being well it should be fine so let's get going let's change the camera around there we go so I've got a little bit of sugar paste here and then I'm just going to paint my board. So you need to do this with fresh sugar paste. That's why I've not done it in advance. So a little bit of water on there. Pop that over there. And then we're just going to roll that out. A little bit of icing sugar. Get my rolling pin out and off we go. So don't need it to be very much. I've got uh, couture today, I think, looking at it. Yes, I have got couture not satinara which i had the other day or is this satinara no this is satinara beg your pardon i'll tell you why i'm confused because it's in the same packaging <laughs> that's not helpful yeah it's in the same blue packaging as couture so that's why i'm confused already so there you go right okay so let's roll it out to about there and then we'll bring this under here and we'll just pop that over the top like so there we go i'll just run that straight over or we can use my lovely smedger for those of you who've got smedges, get your smedges out. And we're just going to run round this to make sure it's all settled down. Pick it up and then we'll take hold of the plastic side scraper and we're just going to cut the end off so we've got a little plaque covered for us to use. Now we're going to be probably cutting it again in a minute but I'll show you why. Let's cut it once first and then we'll come back and do it again in a second. Okay, there we go. Now let's get rid of this. I'm just put this away. Put that down. 
So all week and last week I've been using patchwork cutters. So I've been using patchwork cutters to do various sort of embossing so that you can learn how to do floral painting. Um, let me come back on for the screen a second. So floral painting um, is behind me. You can see that there. And that's one of the courses that I teach online. Now, what I've been trying to do is help people to get to the point where they can pick up a paintbrush and just have a go um, before they then take the next step and maybe sign up for a class on my cake school website so um, that's what i'm trying to do that's the whole aim of this um painting that i've been doing i might put you off after this one though <laughs> so i hope not this is uh tricky and i may not breathe very much or talk even which is quite unusual for me anyway we've been using um patchwork cutters for a couple of weeks now i've, I've painted a lily and i have which was this one here. So they look like this, the sort of black cutters there. Oh, I'm wearing black, that's not very helpful, is it? So I'll put it there. Um, so we're going to be using two different ones today. Now, typically, of course, Wild Rose is the one I'm going to be using and Blossom, what's this one called? Blossom and Leaf. Those are the two that I'm going to be using today. Um, now, Wild Rose we've got coming in tomorrow, but we've wiped out the supplier, basically. <laughs> Every time I ring up Marion and say, I need some more cutters, she goes, no, because, yeah, it's been a little bit busy, which is good. So you've obviously all embraced this. So hopefully this will be something else that you can have a go at doing. Think about doing this on a cake board. I think that's where you need to think about doing this particular um, technique that I'm going to show you this morning. Um, kind of going around the edge of a cake board, something like that. It's kind of meant to be an outline type, willow pattern type, whatever it comes out as. <laughs> I say I've done a few practices, but that's where the um, that's where the buck stops with that. Right. OK, let's have a little look at this. So we'll go on to this to start with now. I'm probably going to pull my camera down a bit later on. So let's start with Wild Rose. Here we go. Now, it's on the website to order, but we're just waiting for the stock. It should be in tomorrow. Poor Marion. And now this has got so it comes on a kit like this with these sort of you sort of twist it off like this. Um, and there's Marion has put various pictures of things she's done over the years. It's just I've now turned it all on its head so, so, and um, done all sorts of different things with it. So this is a really nice flower. So what I thought I'd do is put this in um, the middle and then we'll do a bit of a board around the outside edge. So we'll, we'll create, I'm just looking at what I did yesterday, we'll create a little bit of a sort of arrangement, I guess. So how you do this, you press this down. Now don't forget we're outlining, so we're going to be doing this a little bit differently. So you're going to press it down to start with, and then when you pick it up, I'm going to lift that up. Oh, you can see it. Very good. All right, like so. Now, if we're outlining, what we don't want is this to be deep because then what happens when you get your little brush and you go round the lines what happens is the brush catches everything so you're then going to take hold of either your finger or a smedger and you're just going to go like that and bring it back up to level so you're going to go round and round and round i find it easy with my finger because i can feel it if you go round and round like that press it down You'll see it starting to flatten out, but you've still got your lines. So what's happening is it's levelling out. OK, if I lift that back up again, you'll still see the pattern. OK, but it's now more level than it was before. Now, someone's going to say to me, well, why didn't you just press it in less hard? Now, I tried that yesterday, but it was so difficult to see that this technique works much better than doing it by pressing it sort of very lightly. So when I push my finger across there now, it's almost, it's not quite, but it's almost level with the rest of the sugar paste. And that's what I was saying about sometimes with the sugar paste moving outwards, that you'd need to cut it again. So let's put this one in next to it. So we'll do the same again. So you can only do this with fresh sugar paste um, because otherwise, there we go. Um, if you do it with fresh sugar paste, then you can do this straight away. If you do it, um, with sort of sugar paste that you covered a board and left it, it it's not going to work okay so I'm just going to now this obviously would move it a little bit so you want to make sure you've got all your lines because you're not going to be able to put it back on again or if you are it's going to be a little bit out yeah it's going to get one hit at it okay so we're just sort of smoothing it out like that okay and then what we're going to do, we're going to take this leaf. Which leaf is this one? Hold on, I've got to find the right one now. Is that that one or is it that one? They're all round the wrong way. Let's try that one. 
Yep. Okay. So we'll put one in there. So we're going to build kind of our own sort of little pattern here, I guess. So we'll just put it on and we'll just gently kind of rock it. There it is. And then we'll just flatten it down again. So just go over your finger. Make sure your finger's clean before you start doing this, because otherwise you'll be putting all sorts on there. It should be fine. You've just rolled out your pace, so there should be no reason why it's not okay. Right, that's that bit. And then we'll take another one of these leaves going in the opposite direction, and we'll put that there, like so. Uh, we want that there? Yeah, we'll have that about there. So what I'm doing is basically kind of just building uh, my own pattern here. So this kit comes in sort of all different shapes. So some of the kits are all joined up together and some of them are in little bits. This one, which is the Wild Rose one, is in little bits. So we can change things around, put things in different places. Okay. There we go. Like so. so. You should be able, so you haven't got that deep groove, but you should still be able to see it. I think you can just about see it on camera there. If I tip it, you'll be able to see what's going on. Now, you can either then extend that or you can, once you get started, you'll think, why did I put all these flowers down? <laughs> so probably just start with some basics and then add if you want to. And you can kind of then work it out from there what you need to do. So I've got a second copy of this next to me so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put these little bits away just for a minute. I've got the blossom and leaf cutter here as well. Now I was going to use that one. Now what did I do with that one? It's this one here. So this one has also a very nice pattern, but again, you need to be careful. That's this one here. Um, how you deal with it. So I'm going to just put that one. Let's put that one up there. And again, just press it down. Not too hard. And pick it up. Okay, I'm just going to press it down a tiny bit more just to make sure I've got that middle bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to take my finger and just run over it like that. So you can see the sugar paste is coming out a little bit here on the edge. So that's why I said to you, you might have to trim it back a bit. You just have to see how you go. Got an air bubble in there as well. Of course I have. That's not very helpful. OK, so let's just trim that little bit off there. It's just where it's been pushed off. Yeah, there's an air bubble there. Oh, you are coming out, you are. I'm not having that. Is it gone? Yes, it has. Lovely. OK, so we've got that little bit there as well. And because these cutters can go different ways, you could actually do you've got a bit there and a bit here to kind of match. So you could do one on the opposite side as well. So let's do that. So we've got a bit of a picture going on here and then we can always add some little bits later on. We'll just kind of see how we're doing for time. There we go. So let's press that down. Let's see what we've got now. Yep, perfect. And then we'll just give this a little bit of a, again, the same as before. This bit's really important, okay? You're going to struggle if you don't do this bit. And you need to do it as soon as you've done it to make sure that it's all nice and flat. I can still feel it. Don't get me wrong. I can still feel it. But I want to make sure that I've taken the, the um, groove out of it. There we go, like so. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see that. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch cameras for a second because I'm just going to bring this down a little bit lower because now I've done the rolling out bit, you'll know you need to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's just have a little check. I'm going to bring the, the cocoa butter in in a minute. So there's not a lot. Um, I don't need huge amounts of colour. It's just one colour, one paintbrush, <laughs> she says. One colour, one paintbrush. Right, let's bring that down here. I need to be able to reach it. Hold on. Let me put you back on the other camera for seconds. When I move this camera around, you'll all be <laughs> you'll all be going on a roller coaster ride with me. I need to be able to reach it. There we go. I think that's about right. Perfect. Let's go with that. Right. Now I'm going to just light my new candle that took me ages to find with these dreadful matches. Oh no, we're okay. There we go. So this is a chrome food warmer for those of you that have not seen that already. So this is going to create our heat source and we're going to put on top of here a metal paint palette. And the metal paint palette is going to get hot 
and that's going in turn to melt the cocoa butter that I need um, to be able to paint with. So let's put some of these little buttons on here. So I'm not going to need too many, just a few. There we go. And then I've got two colours I'm using today. This one here is called Cerulean Blue. I'm just going to turn it around so you can see it. That's Cerulean Blue. It's a sort of a royal blue, I guess. And then white. So these are the two colours I've got in use today. All right, let's just take this one out. Take it out. So Cerulean Blue, Royal Blue, um, anything like that will be fine. And then we'll just put that in there like so. Now, if you were painting these, as in like you were filling them, you wouldn't need to be going to all this faff that I was going to with like trying to level it all up. Um, you would just paint it. There's no need to do that. It's only because I'm doing this slightly different technique this morning that I've needed to level it. So don't get too carried away leveling everything. <laughs> oh, someone's fallen in love with my smedges. <laughs> aren't they just the best thing ever? They're great, aren't they? I know they come out practically every time I do a cake. Right, I'm just going to clean my brush up, even though it's got blue on it. I just want to show you what. So we're going to use a brush called Zero Zero. It's a very small brush. Let me show you. Look, it's got numbers on it, Zero Zero. And that's what we're going to use. So it's a tiny little brush because we're going to be doing outlining, which is the one thing <laughs> I always promise myself I never do on a live. So I'll do it on a live. <laughs> what a good idea, Tracy. Right, so let's turn this around. Let's make sure this isn't moving around because it drives me crazy when it does. There we go. Right, so, so this is taking the, the guesswork out of doing this freehand, but we're getting a, a nice pattern that we, we created ourselves. So we've got this thing that we created ourselves and then we've got these two bits here that, that um, were part of the patchwork cutter. So I'm going to start the smaller one. I'm going to grab some of the cerulean blue. Now this is because it's such a tiny little brush. Just be careful when you're mixing your colours that you don't end up um, basically destroying your brush. Just be careful. And I'm going to add some white to it to brighten it up a bit. So it's not so dark. I want it dark, but I don't want it too dark. So always, I always add white to everything. I just find these colours can be very strong. So lots of cocoa butter to get it going. So I want this brush to be right down on the point. So it's going to be really, really thin um, in order to be able to do this. And all I'm going to do is follow my pattern. Now you have to remember that this sugar paste has just been rolled out. So there's no good leaning on it. You've got to be off this. You can't lean on it. So I'm just going to basically outline what I've just put on here. So I'm not, I'm going to talk, but I'm going to try and breathe at the same time. So it's very, very technical now, you see. <laughs> now you want nice thin lines what you don't want is chunky lines and one of the the ways you will end up with chunky lines is if you talk too much like me um, or you forget to flatten this down and then your brush goes into the hole that it's created and then you get this chunky horrible line whereas all I'm doing is basically painting over some lines that have been pushed into the sugar paste so it should be fairly straightforward but you just need the right brush and you need to take your time okay but you will see this come together very quickly there you go I'm going to just turn that around as I go and also because it's on a cake board as well don't paint in odd positions so if you're finding you can't get something move it all right move your board until you get to the point you can get there now you may or may not be able to see on screen, but I'm holding my wrist. My wrist is, um, my arm's on the table and my wrist is in my other hand. So I'm holding it steady or as steady as I can. Now, if you are someone who wants to do this when the sugar paste is dry, what I suggest you do is prepare your board the day before and then come back and do it the following day. And then you will be able to lean on the sugar paste. Um, because I wanted to show you this from the word go I haven't been able to do that so I am doing this with um, fresh sugar paste now but if you want to leave it to set then you can do that that's not a problem every time I pull, pull this brush out I'm twisting it a little bit so that it um, so that you can see that it goes back to a point it's really important this stays at a point like so there we 
you know. So tiny brush. This isn't going to work if you've got have got great big chunky brushes. Okay, um, it's really important that you have a lovely little thin brush to do this. And you follow the lines. You can see the pattern starting to build already. <laughs> it's hard not. It is hard not to lean on a cake. It is. It's tricky, but you can do it. And I say in this case, I definitely can't lean on it because I've just put the sugar paste down. So it's going to be, um, I will be denting it like crazy. I haven't done the middle ones yet. Let's see how those ones go before I claim that it's easy. <laughs> I never claimed it was easy. Now in the middle of this, there is like a, a sort of few little, um, a sort of centrepiece. I'm just going to kind of just put those into the middle like that. Can you see that? There you go, that's coming in. Don't lean on the sugar paste. Yeah, it's a good mantra, that one, isn't it? And then I'm just following the brush down. Also, I find with this, because the line's already there, the paintbrush will just kind of follow them along. I find it doesn't tend to sort of wander off too much. It's sort of guided by it a little bit. But what we're at the aim of this is to do is to create something really kind of fine looking bit like, well, it was Kelly really, wasn't it? This sort of chinese -y type sort of, well, I said willow pattern. She didn't know what I was talking about, so I had to show her. Um, <laughs> similar kind of thing, but using this. Now you can outline these in any colour if you wanted to do a black and white cake, maybe. Black and white theme, or if you wanted to do a golden wedding anniversary, you could outline it in gold. So there's what you don't have to do it in blue. Blue is showing up quite nicely on the camera, so that's good. And then we'll just do these little dots in the middle again. That one's a little bit bigger. See, that's coming out quite nice, isn't it? Are you breathing? Stop breathing for me. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I don't mind. And then we'll come down here. So it's nice and easy, as long as you've got the right equipment, you're going to be fine. And you make sure, I'm going to show you actually what I did yesterday in terms of what happens if you don't get this flat. So if you don't rub it down flat, because I've got a board of horrors I can only describe it as, because I couldn't understand why it wasn't working yesterday. And then I suddenly realised and thought, I know. So I'm going to pass that on to you and then you won't make the same mistake as me. Yes, willow pattern, that's what I'm trying to do. Something like that. That's the aim. You can see it coming out quite quickly just by following this pattern. There we go. OK, so that's that one done already. It's done really quickly. Doesn't take very long. You can see that there already. Now, what I'll do, I'm just working this out now. I will I will do the middle one next, because if I don't, then my arm is going to be on top of it. So my arm is coming forward a little bit further and you can see I'm just kind of gripping onto my hand for dear life here just to kind of stop myself. Um, getting wobbly hands, I should be OK. And then actually I'll just turn that round. And then we'll just kind of go up this leaf here. Yeah, it's like a plate, isn't it? You know, like if you did teacups, that's another one. You make those sort of, I don't know how you've made them in the past, but I always make them with pastelage. Um, you could always make those and then emboss them and then paint them. Well, I think this is quite good for cake boards myself, personally, this technique. I think it's quite fun for that. Just reading your thing. I want to cover a board for birthday cake I need for Saturday. Depends what you're going to do to the board. Um, yeah. I... Oh, God, I never do anything in advance. That's terrible. I can't say that I would because I just do everything as I go. But if you want to cover your board in advance, yeah, cover it. Can't do you any harm, can it? Right, here we go. So we've got this middle bit here. And we'll 
follow that route. And then there's all these veins as well. And that's okay because it's filling it all up for me, so I don't mind. Uh, but I can just about see them. I haven't come unstuck yet. But you never know. I might have to make one or two up if I can't see them. So far, so good. So far, everything's okay. So this is Blossom and Leaf. And this one here that I'm doing now is called Wild Rose. Okay, they are patchwork cutters. So that's what I'm using. Sugar paste I use with Satinara, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. Just use anything, it's fine. Don't worry too much about what brand of sugar paste it is, as long as you remember to flatten it off. Right, let's let's go for the flower now. Here we go. So follow this round. It's like extreme piping for all my royal ices out there. I don't want to hear any more moaning about nozzle number one. You try this. <laughs> I'm only kidding you. That's the other thing that I was going to say to my Royal Isis though, if you have got patchwork cutters, have a think about doing some brush embroidery with them, especially this one, um, because you've got some quite nice shapes on here. So you could always push it into the sugar paste and then do some brush embroidery. So that's something else to think about. Coming in around there. So this is a double layer, this one. this side I think that's coming together isn't it lots of you do your boards in advance do your organized <laughs> like, like me I'm not organized I've just got a lot going on all the time don't laugh my eyes watery and I can't see what I'm doing <laughs> just gotta stop for a minute <laughs> right I think the lights have got to me finally okay I don't know if I'm still on camera. Yes, I am. That's okay. Right, where am I going over here, this side? Just got to turn this one round to see where I'm going. I don't want to make anything up yet. Yeah, I'm not that organised either. If you knew how last minute everything was, you, you would um, understand why. Just when I think, and now there's another lie, there's another one. I haven't got myself organised, so. I think this is coming out okay. So there's lines inside the petals as well. Right, where are we going with this? Okay, over here. So remember, I'm not painting this freehand. I'm following a pattern. All right. So this is anyone can do this. As long as you flatten it down first. And this side. Right. I've gone quiet because I'm focusing on this large one. I want to get this one right. If I get this one wrong, then it will stand out a mile, you see, won't it? And then there's the little lines there. Okay, have I got them all? Yes, I have. Right, a bit more blue. Let's make it a tiny bit darker in the middle, shall we? And then in the middle here, there's all this texture where the centre of this flower is, so we'll pop that in next. Follow it round. Need a bit more. Just be careful with this bit because you don't want to ruin your brush. Just be careful. Let's 
it's not particularly round either it's a little bit out so that's okay there you go you can see that quite nicely now can't you okay let's turn that around I just need to do that little bit there again just so there's a bit more there and we'll go across here So all my videos that I do on sugar and crumbs, because I know lots of people keep asking me now, what, what, when was this, when was that? I'm putting everything, every live that I now do, I'm putting onto YouTube, onto my YouTube channel, which is at Tracy Man Cakes, and you'll find every single one on there. So if you subscribe, you're going to see all these lives going up. Yes, you can watch them on sugar and crumbs live, and you can also watch them back on sugar and crumbs, but sometimes because there's so many lives on here. If you want to go back and find one particular one, you should be able to. I've put pictures of all the projects I've done at the front of the um, YouTube video, so you'll know which one it is. So if you want to refer back to one, if you saw, saw me do a cookie one and then you can't remember when that was, go and have a look on YouTube and you'll find it. You'll be able to see it. And then you can catch up and follow because sometimes you know when you do a project you might do say I don't know let's say you do a cake or I do a cake for a man or something and then you go oh I would I can want to do that but I don't want to do it until I don't know July and then you've got to search back through the videos so hopefully this will mean that you can find it a lot quicker I'm putting about three videos a week up on YouTube at the moment so you should be able to find it pretty easy and if I start to get too many, I'll start putting them in sections. But at the moment, there's, they're fairly easy to scroll through. And then you should be able to find them. No problem at all. Can you use the embossers on set royal icing? Well, you won't be able to um, press into the royal icing because that will set hard. So you can't use them on royal icing. That's probably the one thing you can't use them on. Um, no is the answer to that one. A nice thought maybe but no I think you would have a problem you could push them into buttercream but they'd get pretty sticky and messy as well so I mean you could try but sugar paste is the best thing for this it works really well that's just simple it's a simple idea and Kelly will be impressed with me now Now I've got to check this one because, right, there's a line there. So the light's shining on me, so it's a little bit difficult for me to see that particular bit. Am I still on camera? Yes. Yeah, you can't, I don't think you can do it on royal icing. Cookies, I've been doing this on cookies a lot, haven't I? So I keep bringing out all these cookie cutters. I've got three new ones next week. Yay. And my cupcake one, which I showed last Thursday, we're down to we've got we've had to put another order in because we've sold out. Um, so we've got some more of those coming, which is again another video you can nip back and have a look on YouTube, or you can watch it on Sugar and Crumbs. Um, but I'm a bit into cookie designing, as some of you may have noticed. Ever since I started doing royal icing, and now I can see all sorts of possibilities. My coffee cup one is is really popular now there's the middle of this one is actually here that's why I've been a bit cautious about this one because I need to find it to make sure I get it in the right place let me turn that round it comes down the side here let's just check I've got that right yeah there we go like so bring it out a little bit further Let's go over to this one. And we'll do this one as well. So we can get the full picture. So this is the reverse of that one. So it's just going in the other direction. So now we're an expert, you see. We've already done that one once. So we're going to find this nice and easy now. She says, this is where you get confident and then you, you realise you've made a mistake. I hate that, so... <laughs> slow down me included yeah you think oh well, i know this i know this pattern and then you accidentally blob your brush or do something that's annoying and then it's like no so 
so I can see someone's just joined us so if you've just joined us you can go back and watch these videos after I've finished so you can always go back and watch them again so if you've missed out you can watch them back it's just if you're on the live you can ask questions if I actually get an opportunity to look at the camera and find out what you're asking me <laughs> if I miss it you can always email me afterwards and I'll I'll have a look for you there we go. Right, where have we got to there? I need a teapot or something, don't I? I need some sort of teapot cookie to go with this sort of chintzy type pattern. That's what I'll have to do next. I'll have to invent a teapot cookie cutter to go with all of this. Let's go back and do this bit in the middle here. Oops, I flooded it a bit. Okay, so I've flooded it a little bit, so I'm just going to grab some cocoa butter. Just press it down. There we go. Nicely rescued. And then we'll bring these around a little bit. around here <laughs> I, I like that comment Jackie that made me laugh so I'm saying once you get going now what I'm going to do in a minute I'm just going to add a couple more bits on because we've actually done this in quite reasonable time and I'm going to show you very importantly the pitfalls of if you do it the wrong way and so if you are thinking about doing this please watch the next bit because it's really important otherwise you're going to find yourself coming unstuck okay because this is not an easy technique if you don't lay it out right okay I know I don't want anyone saying oh my god look at this mess you can get round it but you need to be a bit careful because it's an unusual one I think this one so hold on in there and I'll show you some other bits in a second. So we're nearly towards the end of this one, or the end of this bit. We'll have a look at it in a minute, see what our design looks like, because this willow pattern is um, full on, isn't it? So I might just add the blossom cutter in a second, kind of join it up a bit. I'd like to have joined it up, but I was cautious, really, because I didn't really know how long it would take me to do this. How long have I been live? Oh, I've only been live 35 minutes. How have I managed this? Speedy Gonzalez here. I thought this would take me hours. I've obviously got quicker at it than yesterday. Okay. And then we'll just do that little bit there. Right, so let's add some more. Let's turn it round. That's where we are so far at the moment, but I want it to be as full as we can get it. So let's join it up. Let's go back to Blossom and Leaf. Let's join it up with some of these little leaves, shall we? So we've got leaves going in different directions. So for example, this one goes that way and that one goes that way. So you can see they kind of turn in different directions. And then, so what we'll do, let's have a little look. Because I want it to be, now there's little versions of this as well. Hold on. So we've got little pieces there, you see, little tiny ones. Let's get those out because they'll be going in different directions. Number one, if you buy any patchwork cutters, please keep them in the same bag that you were given them in because you will lose them for sure. They are tiny and they can wander off. Well, certainly that's what I found anyway. Right, let's put, I want this joined up, so let's try and join this up now, shall we? So we're going to put that one there and we're just going to press it down. So anyone who's just joined me later on or just joined me now, you're going to see what I did to kind of make this easier to paint. So you press it down to start with, but not too far. And then you take your finger and you level it up so that the pattern is just literally flat onto the um, sugar paste itself. Now, which way are we going with these leaves? I know we go that way, I think. Let's change direction a little bit. So we've got another one in there. So it's got to be done on fresh sugar paste. 
if I don't like one of the leaves in one position, I'm going to add an extra leaf, you see, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. And then I'm just trying to work out. Yeah, that should do it, shouldn't it? Let's bring that down a little bit. And there, press down. Is that going to work? There we go. You can always slot it back in if it hasn't worked in any place and press it down and then smooth it out. But once you've smoothed it out, you're kind of changing the shape a little bit. So you're then going to find it's much more difficult to kind of bring back. Right, let's bring this one in about here. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And then we'll smooth that down again. See, that looks like loads, but actually I couldn't believe how quickly it went, to be perfectly honest. I've done all that in 35 minutes, so this isn't going to take very long, is it? Right, let's go this way now. So we change, so rather than using this one, we're going to change direction now. And we'll pop that one in. Where did we put that one in? We'll try and look like it's joined up a little bit. So we put that one in about, well, let's come back a bit about there. And we'll just rock it side to side. A little bit more, miss that one. Again, just go round again. It's like being on Antiques Roadshow today, isn't it? <laughs> this is my willow pattern. It's worth a fortune. <laughs> right, and now we'll go for this one. And where do we want that one to join? Roughly about there, maybe. smooth it down see some of the sugar paste is coming off the end there a little bit not too drastic actually not as drastic as I thought it was going to be right now let's have a look at this one here am I going to get that in okay or do I need the other one that goes the other direction let's have a look no we need this one it's tight but we're going to make it oh yes we're definitely going to make it right I want a gap you see so I might have this off the edge a tiny bit so I wasn't planning to go all around the middle but I'm here now <laughs> going along I know I can make a whole dinner service while I'm here can I <laughs> it's just pushed it off the edge there a little bit so I'm just going to take my finger around there and just push the sugar paste back on again just in case it starts deciding it's falling off and not cooperating with me which is not happening I always used to say to my students, you're in charge, not the sugar paste. Just remember that. Right, put that on there. Right, one more after this. We just need to decide which size. So the joy of this set is you can at least um, use some of the different sizes to get to where you need to be. You know, I'm not just stuck with this big size here. I can use the little ones. See, that's going to be too much, I think. That one is going to be just about right, I think. So it's a slightly different layout to the other side, but that's okay. Right, press that down. If you wanted it to be very regimented, you could spend a bit more time planning it than me rather than just trying to do it live and hoping everything's going to be okay. Right, let's just go round and make sure these are flat. Again, just push them back on if they start to come off. This is all dry now, so if you sort of put your fingers across it, you're not going to get anything coming off. Obviously, I don't recommend, you know, rubbing your fingers all over it now at that point. OK, right. Let's put these back in the bag. We definitely don't want to be doing that. Right. Where have we got to? Let's start around this side, I think. And we'll get a bit more cocoa butter on the go. And then we'll start with these little leaves. So this is very straightforward because they're only little tiny leaves. So we're just going to go straight down there. And then it's got like a centre line there. Remember, it's all mapped out for you. This isn't something that I've drawn. It's something that's there already. It's quite a strong colour too. So you've got to be careful as you do it. You don't want to be rushing through this. A 
and again if it doesn't quite join you can always extend it out a little bit you know you don't have to stick within the boundaries of what the cutter's doing so if you want to make that tail a little bit longer or you want to add an extra leaf you can do that you're not just limited by what the cutter tells you that it wants you to do however if you don't want to do that then you've got this nice pattern here okay let's turn it right get there that's it boss the sugar paste around don't don't um let it take control <laughs> And again, with this as well, if you find you've done a bit of a dodgy line in there somewhere, OK, you're going to see it because everybody's a massive you know, perfectionist when you can see your mistakes. But I bet you as an overall picture, you're not even going to notice it. So um, don't worry about it. Worst case scenario, stick a butterfly on it or add an extra flower. Don't worry about it. It's not worth it. It's only a cake, as someone said to me years ago. Right, grab that, put a bit more white in there because it's getting a bit, I think I've had some cocoa butter flood out and it's all gone a bit all over the place. Okay. So cerulean blue is the colour I'm using okay or you can use navy blue or you can use another colour called ocean blue if you want to do this kind of pattern you might not want to you might prefer to do um, something else have I gone off course there yeah I have right that's me talking now right I'm gonna have to go back and fix that let me just do everything around it the light is shining in a funny place. Now I've created an extra leaf. That's okay. We're going to get round that in a second. Don't talk while you're painting. <laughs> it's going well up to that point. That's okay. I'm actually just going to near enough ignore it. a leaf in there see if I leave that like that you're not even going to notice I've made a mistake there and I think that is going to I'm just going to get away with that I'm going to leave it let's come back to it later on there you go you see even if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world I think it will be fine you can always paint these in as well if you prefer them to be solid then you can obviously do that, but this is about outlining today. With my tiny brush. There you go, that looks all right. Yeah, I'll pretend it wasn't there, that's right. Yeah, if you wanted to do this on a board in advance, if it's gonna go with your kind of cake theme, then yeah, do, it, do this way ahead. As much prep as you can get done before you do a cake will make the experience much more enjoyable than trying to do everything on the same day. So when I do lots of my lives, you know, we do a lot of prep beforehand so that when we do go live, um, I say we make it look easy, but we've prepped everything beforehand. So we've made extra flowers, we've made, we've printed off the butterflies or whatever it was we were doing the other day. I pre-coloured the sugar paste, so there's loads you can do in advance of actually doing the cake itself, including, you know, prepping it as well, putting the buttercream in, ganache or whatever it is you're using. Much easier. There you go. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, you wouldn't think it's a mistake at all, would you? I think it looks fine. I'm going to ignore it. I just went over one line too far, but do you know what? It's really not that bad. And as you say, when you look at the overall design, when it's finished, I don't even think you're going to look at it. I might look at it because I know it's there, but I bet you if I showed somebody else, they wouldn't have a clue. 
children are very good at telling you the truth. My children, bless them, I used to say, now, what is this? And I would show them something I'm making in sugar at the time, and they would just tell me as it is. They wouldn't be like my husband, who would go, well, what would you like it to be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it? And I always remember doing a, uh, a horse cake once. I was doing the head of a horse. I hadn't finished it. It didn't have any, um, I don't know, what didn't it have? I didn't have any ears on it. Kelly comes marching. It had to be Kelly, didn't it? Kelly came marching into the cake room. I know she must have been about 10, I suppose. And she goes, oh, what are you making? And I said, oh, well, what, what do you think it is, Kelly? And she goes, oh, what is it? Some sort of velociraptor or something. I thought, blimey. So I, <laughs> I thought, I don't believe this. But anyway, yeah, it looked like a dinosaur. But by the time it got its ears and everything else on, it was fine. And she knew it was a horse then. And she thought it was funny. So... Kids say what they see. I bet if you showed a child this, they wouldn't even notice anything gone wrong on it. So there we go. Look, we're going around quite nicely now, aren't we? Let's go this way. So all in all, to do all of this, I reckon it'll have taken me about an hour. So it's not that long either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was worried he, was, oh, he would get it wrong, Donna. That's exactly it, because then I'd have an argument with him, you see. You can't argue with kids, can you? Not when they're that little and they say what they see, bless them. All right, along this side. Let's turn that round again. Just remember to keep turning your cake board so you can get to it. Don't make it painful for yourself. Kelly's colour class is on Monday. We haven't done it yet. She's all ready. She sorted her sheets out. So yeah, if you still want to, anyone wants to join Kelly's colour, I keep calling it therapy, she's gonna get tell me off before much longer. Colour theory class, it's on Monday evening. Now we're on Monday evening, but we're not clashing with sugar and crumbs. We're starting at 6.30 and she'll be finished by eight. So if you want to learn about colour theory, then you need to go to my website. I'm sure Nikki will put a little um, thing up for me because she's very good. Um, a little link to Kelly's class. So Kelly's my daughter, if any of you have not met Kelly before, she's normally on comments on Sugar and Crumbs. She um, uh, she is absolutely phenomenal at colour. I mean, I'm jealous. It's that good. Um, so she's going to be teaching us all how to understand the colour wheel, how to mix colours. Um, and you can go back and watch it again afterwards as well. So it's a good reference point when it's a really um, important thing being able to understand and make colours. You know, it's what puts colours together, like red and pink looks really nice together. You would never believe red and pink would look nice together, but I use that colour combo all the time because I love it. Um, so think about things like that. So if anybody wants to join that class, it's still available and it's on Monday, 6.30 until um, 8. So just before the start of Sugar and Crumbs, so you can go straight over there afterwards but it's on a closed facebook group so we will send you a link so you can join it there's a lot of people on the class actually poor kelly <laughs> be kind everybody <laughs> oh dear poor old kelly she'll be fine i'm gonna be on comments that night in fact i'll probably sit there mixing paste and helping her so i will be there so but she's the expert i can assure you with her color really good really good her painting's phenomenal it really is we're all a bit arty in our family you see that's what it is all right look how quickly we're getting around this now we're coming around towards that bit there you're getting quite a nice view there yes yeah, my pa's on this morning aren't you nikki <laughs> and then in a minute when I've done this I'm going to show you the pitfalls all right so I'm going to show you what I did yesterday and um, it's like my learning curve board it's still here it's in front of me and and then I can show you what not to do I wanted to get this one right because I need this for the picture for the 
um, YouTube channel. So I've got to get one bit right, but I've got the rubbishy bits in front of me, the bits that went wrong. You can absolutely book the class and watch it later. Yes, if you can't make it Monday night because you've got other commitments, you can book it and you can watch it at a later date. That applies to everybody. If you're in a different time zone or you are got other commitments, yeah, you can go back and watch it. Um, or you can join us live and you can, if you even if you join us live or watch it back later, you can go and watch it back as many times as you like because you'll have access to the Facebook group and you'll be able to do that from there. So there's some downloads as well, which we're just sorting out now that will be going onto the page just before, just after the class as well, that you'll be able to download that's going to help you with your colour theory or you can just look at them on the screen you don't even need to download them so you can just open them up and that will help you understand your colours as well so Kelly's done all of that already so there's that coming along yeah we're getting there the end is in sight or we'll have, turn it around have a look at it and then decide if the end is in sight that's what I normally do anyway. Yeah, the idea was to kind of create um, sort of this Chinese blue type sort of willowy pattern thing. <laughs> thing. And then what I'll do is I'll load it up to YouTube later. But again, you can watch it on Sugar and Crumbs. So you'll be able to find it for reference. Because I keep getting lots of comments now about which live did you do this for and which live did you do that for. So I'm pointing everyone in the direction of YouTube now because that's where everything I've done is going to be on. Absolutely everything. So even some of the Facebook lives I've done on other pages um you'll find them all on there together so you should be able to find it we're on the last leaf right okay let's have a little look let's turn this round i'm seeing it that way round that's how my eyesight is seeing it i'm looking it up on the camera as well and see there you go that's not bad is it I'm quite happy with that actually I'm not even going to touch it which is highly unusual for me because normally I'd be in there doing something and you can't even spot my mistake you've got to be looking hard for it <laughs> that's interesting isn't it something a bit different now let me show you um what goes wrong because this is an important part of it and it is an important part of it so I'm going to bring take my cocoa butter out of the way in fact before I go too much further I'm going to blow this candle out because otherwise I will forget and then I'll go home and have my lunch and then that will be it. So here we go. Right, so this is what I did yesterday and I want to show you the pure horror of what I was up to. So this is me doing this yesterday and it really isn't very good at all. And that is because it's lumpy. Can you see the difference between that and this? I'm going to hold the two up. They're the same pattern. Let me get this under the camera so you can see it. So one, this one on the left, I didn't flatten it out. The one on the right, I did flatten it out. So I just used the area um, as a guide. So if you don't flatten this out and you press your embosser in, you see it gets quite deep. You need to take your finger and go like that. Now, one here, I've got one here and you can hardly see it. That was me using the embosser and pressing it really lightly and I just couldn't see what I was doing. I thought, well, this is even worse because half of it's missing because the sugar paste is going a little bit up and down as well. So you do need to press it into the sugar paste, but not too far, but you really, really must flatten it down. Um, otherwise, now look at this horror of a leaf here. I mean, what happens is, I'm going to just show you quickly what happens with this. When you take your brush 
and you go down here you don't get a thin line you get a thick line which is fine if that's what you want but your brush goes straight into that groove and you've lost any finesse that you could have had with these lines so again if I bring this back up here if you look at the two different leaves there you've got one that's all thick and honestly you will get it it's impossible not to because the side of your brush is going up the side of the sugar paste I mean no matter what I did yesterday I couldn't stop it and the only way I stopped it was to flatten out the sugar paste so it's literally just catching it and it's making everything really chunky so flattening that sugar paste is absolutely crucial and then once I'd worked it out you see then we were up on a roll because that's what I then discovered oh wait, yes I've got it now so that's what this was my process yesterday <laughs> This one here um, was the side of this one again and I was trying to play around with it to see about adding lines and bits and pieces but I actually decided in the end that it's just nice as it is without trying to add in extra lines and things and shading. It just doesn't need it. I think the patterns are there already. There we go, let's turn that around like that rather than trying to do all that extra stuff. So um, use what's on the patchwork cutter um, and you will find there will be enough on there to be able to do it. Now, don't forget as well, there's also a lovely sunflower that you could do this with. Um, and you could also um, use a different colour to outline. You could use black, but black is quite scary and can often put people off because you, you're doing it and it really shows up. So I'd go navy blue or cerulean blue, which is the one I use today. Cerulean blue is this one here. And I think that would be a much better better plan than trying to go to black um, the other way of doing it you could do um, for a golden wedding or something you could outline this with black uh, sorry with gold dust mixed with cocoa butter that would be quite a nice way of doing it as well or you could change the base color so you don't have to do this on white you could change the base color to something else and you could do you could outline all the leaves in green or something what i would suggest you do is get a bit of sugar paste roll it out and stamp a few things out and see what you like the look of and then you will be able to make a decision as to what it is exactly that you want to do but there's obviously the lily as well which we did i painted that in total um when we did all the shading and that a couple of um weeks ago but again if you wanted to outline this it would be the same thing you might make these solid but you would follow the same principle so you are looking at sort of a more of a solid middle but also as well which i found quite helpful was with the sugar paste here is if you can't see what you've done, so say you've put this on there and you've flattened it out and you can't quite see what you've done, just get yourself another bit of sugar paste and press the embosser right down and right up again and you will then be able to see exactly where everything is and you will then be able to go back and just fill it all in because once you've started this process, you've lost the shape. So just remember that you can't do that. You do need to see there you go you've got some ideas of color coming up already green and fuchsia you just need to try some different color schemes and see what you get but i think that'd be really nice and the aim of the game really today was just to try and do something that was a little bit sort of um on that sort of what's it sort of chinese patterny type thing isn't it willow but i kept thinking willow pattern that's what i was thinking of um but you can go back and do all sorts of things with it but just keep it really plain and please use a small paintbrush zero zero is the paintbrush that you want for this don't use anything bigger otherwise you're going to find this really really tricky and practice first please practice because it took me a while to get my head around what i was doing i know i've done it really quickly but actually it was a little bit tricky to start with so yeah have a go at that first you'll end up losing yourself in the pattern yes you probably would <laughs> Right, okay, there's my website coming up there now. So that's where you'll find some of the patchwork cutters and bits and pieces. Don't forget, I've been going on about my YouTube channel quite a bit today. That's because we're heavily putting everything up there at the moment. So that's my um, YouTube channel, at Tracy Man Cakes. My Instagram is exactly the same, at Tracy Man Cakes, as is my Facebook. It's all the same, but that's where you're going to find some of the videos if you can't find them on Sugar Girl Comes because they have all sorts of um, videos on there and everything gets a bit lost so you'd be able to find them if you wanted to do something i'm hoping you see because people keep messaging me and saying i know you did this and i know you did that where is it go and have a look on the youtube channel and you're going to find it all on there so um it will help you i think because everything i've done live is on there and i put pictures up so you can see what it is that i've done um and the cake that i did on tuesday 
has now gone. It has gone to a different charity this time. So I normally send them off to Stoke Mandeville Hospital because that's um, nearby, but it's gone to Rennie Grove this time. So it's gone to the hospice. So that's where that's been pick, picked, up, picked up this morning and taken. So it's gone to a good home. So I'm happy with that. I don't mind that at all. So they were all very excited, the nurses there this morning. So they'll be getting their cake later today. So I will see you back on Sugar and Crumbs at half past six on Tuesday. And um, yeah, that's it. The week is over on Sugar and Crumbs. It goes very quickly, doesn't it? So have a lovely day, everyone. And uh, take care. And I will see you all again soon. I'm going to sing now my bye bit because it's becoming a bit legendary now. <laughs> now I've mentioned it. Everyone's picking up on it now. So I will see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye.